Hi, so we started at the LP spaces. And uh, um, so I just recall you the young inequality, okay? What we proved last time is that Oh, which is the following, you have A and B, two uh, non-negative real number, and uh, lambda, a constant in R, which is between 0 and 1. Uh, so what we proved <laughs> last time is that the following inequality holds, you have that A lambda times B, 1 minus lambda is less or equal than lambda a plus 1 minus lambda b. And we also saw that we have that the equality holds when a is equal to b. OK, so now we, uh, we will prove another, somehow, another version of this inequality, okay? So, theorem. Um, so, call it second version of the Young inequality. So we have this sign P and Q in R. So we have P larger than 1 and Q larger than 1, and such that you have that 1P plus 1 over Q is equal to 1. They are called a conjugated exponent. Then we have for any a b in R, and again we have a b non negative. We have that a to the power a b, sorry, is less or equal than one over p times a to the power p plus uh, 1 over q times b to the power q. And these times we have that we have the equality here if a p is equal to b q. So we see the proof. So the idea, of course, is, is to use uh, the first version of the Young inequality. So choosing uh, for some appropriate choice of A, B. OK, so first of all, we define lambda, that lambda, has 1 over P. OK, and then we get that this, you get that 1 over Q is equal to 1 minus lambda. And then we define uh, with capital A as a 
rise up to 1 over lambda and b is small b rises to the power 1 over 1 minus lambda. Okay, then we want to apply this first version of the Young inequality for big A and big B, okay? This capital A and capital B. So, So you have that a lambda times b one minus lambda is less or equal than lambda a plus one minus lambda b. And then we plug in this inequality our choice of, of a and b. So by definition, we have that a b is less or equal than lambda a one lambda plus one minus lambda b one minus lambda. And so finally, what you get is that AB is less or equal than 1 over P times A to the power P plus 1 over QB to the power uh, Q. OK, so we are done. OK. OK, now we will somehow start to introduce some function that then will turn out to be a norm in these LP spaces. And um, so we need to introduce the following definition. So you have f, a function f defined on a measurable set E with values on the extended real line. Um, okay, so measurable, of course. And we define the essential supremum, which is somehow a generalization of the notion of supremum. of f is the following. So I will denote it with s sup of f over e is defined as the infimum over t uh, in the full uh, extended real line such that we have f of x is less than t almost everywhere in in E. And analogously, we define the essential infimum femum of F and sorry, of F. So we will denote it with S inf of f over e, this would be the supremum over the t in belonging to the extended real line such that f of x is larger than t almost everywhere <coughs> in e. Okay. 
Okay, and then we, as I told you, we we try to uh, to introduce some norm in these help spaces that we are going to define. So for the mo moment, uh, there will be just some other definition. So we start again by a function with the same property defined on a, measure, on a measurable set E with values in, in the extended real line, measurable. And so we distinguish two cases. OK, in the first cases, we pick a P, which will be an exponent, which is in between 1 and infinity. But it can take the values 1, but it cannot be equal to infinity. And we define what will, then we will prove that it is a norm. So, but for the moment, that just use this definition, this notation is the integral over e of the modulus of f to the power p rises to the exponent 1 over p. While when p is equal to uh, infinity, the norm will be the essential supremum of the Uh, of the modulus of f over e. OK, so just now keep in mind this definition. OK, so we want to, to, to prove step by step that this will be norm in some appropriate space. And to do this, uh, we need, which is the so-called elder inequality, And uh, which will be um, a consequence of the of the young inequality. Okay. Okay. So you consider two exponents, p and q. In R, they are both larger or equal than one, and uh, okay, they must be conjugate exponents. Okay, so it means that one over p plus one over q is equal to one. Then we consider two measurable functions defined on, uh, on a measurable set E with values in R, measurable function, functions, OK. And such that we assume that this that will turn out to be the LP norm for the moment considered like a quantity is finite for f and the same is finite for G. Then we have that we can say something about the product. So we have that f times G the norm of, of the product with exponent p equal to 1 is finite. And moreover, we can control this in terms of these two norms. OK, this is just is this, OK, by definition. This will be less or equal than. Okay, and moreover, again, we also <coughs> consider the case when uh, the, the, the quality holds here.
Okay, so... <clears throat> We have that the equality holds one. We have that f to the power the modulus of f to the power p is equal to some constants times the modulus of g to the power q. <coughs> Okay, so uh, we consider start by considering the case when p is uh, strictly larger than one. Okay, and uh, okay by this relation, <coughs> we know that this implies that q must be uh, finite. Okay. Okay, then we express uh, the modulus of the product of f times g in this way. We consider we divide and multiply for the same t uh, positive. This is true for any t positive, of course. And uh, okay, we as before we introduce some auxiliary uh, function a tilde defined as t times the modulus of f, and b tilde will be would be one over t times the model of g. And we want to apply the um, the Young inequality, the second version of the Young inequality to, this, to those uh, new function A tilde and B tilde. Okay, so... tilde p plus 1 over q b tilde q. Okay, so we have to bear in mind that these are equal to the, to the modulus of this product. And, uh, and then we substitute choice here. So we have 1 over p times t to the power p times f modulus of f to the power p plus 1 over q uh, t to the powers minus q times g to the power q. Okay, so we have that for any x in E and for any t positive, we have that. Okay, let's put it actually. Okay. You have that for any t positive, you have the following. You pass to the integral. Okay, and this is less or equal than 1 over p times t to the power p. 
the LP norm of f to the power p plus 1 over q t to the minus q g q q. where if we define this A and B in this way as T Q and now we, we choose, we make a choice for T here and we choose T so that we have that AP is equal to BQ Okay, so in this case we have that here we have this is equal to A times B for what we prove about the, you know, the young inequality. And so we have that on this, for this choice, we have that TP F to the power P, P is equal to T minus Q. Our Q, and then we have that T P to the power P plus Q is equal to G Q Q divided by F P P. And so for this choice of our star. We have that is less or equal than A times B, which is equal to T F P times T minus one. And so we are done, okay? No, sorry. This. Okay, now when the case P is equal to 1, is somehow easier. equal to 1, so q is equal to infinity plus infinity. So we have immediately have that f times g. So point wise he is less or equal than modulus of f times the essential supremum of g over E, and this is almost everywhere in E, and then if we pass to the limit, we get what we want, okay? So not to the limit, so we pass to the integral. This is, of course,
Okay, now uh, we have still to uh, to clarify when the, the equality holds for the um, elder inequality. Okay, so we, we know that the integral of this modulus is less or equal than Tp over P. We just prove it as P P plus. So we know this by the Young inequality, okay? So here we have the equality, since from these two, when Tp plus Q is equal to g to the power q, the norm gq to the power q, divided by f to the power p, divided by p. So after this, we observe that if the quality holds, must be fg must be equal to t p over p times f p so we have this would be t to the minus q over Q times GQ. So call it uh, star. Okay, now we look at the, uh, at the function, um, at the equality in a pointwise way somehow. So we have that by the Young inequality, We have that the modulus of this product is less or equal than Tp <coughs> P times f of P plus T minus Q, Q times GQ. This is by the Young inequality. And uh, so basically, we can say something about the sign. of this quantity minus this, of course. So we have that. This implies that you have that Tp over P times of f plus T minus Q to the power minus Q over Q of G. Q minus the modulus of this product is larger or equal than 0. So we know this and this. Uh, so somehow this is this is a non-negative function all this here, non-negative function which has zero integral by this.
So this is means that it must be zero almost everywhere in E, okay? So for almost every x in E, uh, we must have that this function must be zero, okay? In particular, you have that this equality must hold. GQ, okay. And okay, let me also uh, show that this is. Okay, now let, let's put it in that way. Yeah. Star. Star. This. Hmm? It's a ah, uh, it's a uh, uh, it's a Q. Uh, yes, it's a Q. Okay. Okay. So we have that by the young inequality. Um in an, in the so the second version For for these choices of little a t equal to t times modulus of f and b equal to t minus one the modulus of g, we have that t p f of p. So we know when it holds the Equality and so from this what we get finally is that the modulus of G must be equal to a constant times F to the power P minus Q. Okay, or or also you can you can express this since these these two are conjugate exponent as constant times the modulus of f times p minus one. Okay, and this concludes the proof. to introduce these LP spaces. So we define the following set. LP, oh, let me denote it now with uh, this italic symbol, with this italic L, as uh, the set of function, okay, of measurable function um, values in R. Measurable such that you have that this integral. Is, uh, is finite. This is for P, which belongs to this 
range while when you consider p equal to infinity uh, this would be the space of f such that you have that the essential supremum of f over e is, uh, is finite. Okay. So what we can observe that is that LP is a vector space so LP so given to function f and g in LP v and some lambda in R, we have that um, for instance F plus G is, uh, is well defined and um, lambda times F also and um, so it is well defined in the sense that since you know that that these norm are finite so if you have f which belongs to lp and g which belongs to lp then we have that okay by definition these are finite Sorry, still P. Okay, and so we know that if they are integrable, we know that the measure where they are equal to infinity is zero. We saw this for integrable function, it's true. And so we have that the sum is well defined. And uh, okay, moreover, you have that beside this, you have that um, lambda fp would be equal to lambda p f of p, which would be finite as well. And then, so what about the sum of f plus p? Okay, to prove that the sum of uh, f plus g, sorry, is in LP, we will use this uh, inequality, which maybe you can prove by yourself. So it's if you have a plus b uh, to a non-negative number raised to the power p, this is less or equal than 2 to the power p times a p plus b p okay so if you can apply this to with the choice so you have f plus g to the power p uh, is less or equal if you want to f plus g to the power p which is less or equal than 2 to the power p by this quality and uh, so you have f power p plus g to the power p and so this means that you can bound the integral p norm of the sum in terms of 2p of 
of this sum here. And that we know by hypothesis that these two are finite, so also have that f plus g will belongs to Lp. Okay, so it's clear how we endo uh, these spaces. So we will endo these spaces with the quantity that I defined before, that then we will prove that are norms. Okay, so to prove that these are norm, we still need uh, to prove that the, the triangle inequality holds, and this will be provided by the Minkowski inequality. Okay, which tell us the following. If you have 1p, an exponent p between 1 and infinity, then the Lp norm of f plus g is less or equal than the sum of the norm, Lp norm of f plus the Lp norm of g. Okay, we start by somehow the easy case, which are for p equal to 1 and p equal to infinity. So for we observe that by the somehow pointwise triangle inequality, we can infer that f plus g, the modulus of f plus g, the is less than f, then modulus of f times modulus of g. And so for p equal 1, we just take the integral on both sides, and so we are done. OK, and the same is basically for, <coughs> for p equal infinity. So we have that essential supremum of f plus g e is less or equal than the essential supremum of f in e plus the essential supremum of g in e. Okay, now we treat the case when p is strictly in between 1 and plus infinity. OK, so we, we start to, to compute this norm, uh, p to the power p. So this is nothing else that f plus g modulus to the power p. OK, we can write this uh, as f plus g p minus 1 times f plus g. And then this is less or equal than f plus 
g b minus 1 times f plus f plus g b minus 1 times g. Okay, now we want to apply the elder inequality to this first term. Okay, so we have this term here. So you have that f plus g q times f p. Oh, where of course you have that 1 over p plus 1 over q is equal to 1. And in particular you have that q is equal to p, p minus 1. And so we can continue here. Okay, I just substitute the values of Q here, okay, times the LP norm of F. <coughs> and so this is what? This is F plus G LP norm rise to the power P minus 1 times uh, the LP norm of F. Okay, and then we plug this here. So finally, what we get is that F plus G is less or equal than. Um, P of F plus G times F plus you have F plus G here. Uh, this is P, P minus one times times G P. Okay, you can do the same there. And so you collect F plus G, P minus 1, and then we are done, okay? Okay, of course, if the sum is zero, then uh, the, the inequality is trivial. Okay, there's nothing to, to prove. Okay, so just to be. Okay, just to, to complete, just write quickly the fact that, so if, uh, uh, f plus g is equal to zero, then uh, the inequality is trivial. Uh, 
and then if uh, f plus g is equal to plus infinity, then we use the, the inequality that I mentioned before, so is that, that a plus b to the power p is less or equal than 2 power p times a p plus bp. And so we have that plus infinity must be equal to f plus g to the power p is less or equal than c f p gp. So means that one, at least one of these must be equal to plus infinity, OK? So at least one of a is equal to infinity, OK? And so this really concludes the proof. Okay, so there is um, there is one still one remark. Uh, um, so we want to prove that uh, what we call LP norm, this is a norm. Okay, so there is si still something to fix uh, in the sense that uh, to fulfill all the requirement to be a norm, we still miss one of them in the sense that to be a norm, we should have that if the norm is 0, then the function must be 0, OK? OK. But uh, you, you can, this is true almost everywhere, OK? This is what we can. Um, what we can, what we can infer. So somehow, we don't have this. We don't have that. Uh, if the norm is zero, then the function is zero. Because if you change the values of the function in the in the set of of measure zero, you obtain a different function. Okay. So to avoid this problem, it's, it's somehow it's very easy. You identify function which are equal uh, outside. Uh, um, set of measure zero. So somehow you consider, instead of considering uh, this uh, space here, you, you take the quotient of, of this set uh, over function which are equal uh, outside of a set of measure zero, OK? So basically, we introduce uh, uh, an equivalent a relation of equivalence relation. So we introduce. that fg, so we have, we say that f is uh, in relation with g if and only if f is equal to g almost everywhere, OK? So this, in this way, we identify, we are, we are considering class of equivalence, actually, instead of function, but we identify function that are equal uh, up to a set of measure 0, OK? And so we, just to be formal, uh, first I introduce in this space with this capital L. Now I will define with this, with in this way, with this other L, the space, the quotient space, OK? So with this will be the space whose elements are indeed class of equivalence by this uh, constructed with equivalence relation. Uh, OK, so of course we, have, we want that f is, uh, uh, they must be, of course, measurable function. And they, 
it, and we want that the LP norm of f is is finite. Okay. This is a normed linear space. So finally, what we what we have is that if we endow this new space with this norm, it is a linear is a norm at linear space. Okay. Okay. So we have that. If uh, now I use this somehow heavy notation, but then we we will get rid of these brackets, okay? If b is zero, that means that f is equal to zero almost everywhere. So we have also the comma. If uh, so we have that for any lambda positive. Uh, we have that lambda f p is equal to lambda f of p. Okay, still in brackets. And we have that the triangle inequality holds uh, because of the Minkowski inequality. Okay, so the triangle. Inequality holds because of uh, the Minkowski inequality. <laughs> ah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay, now this we see a little somehow exercise. Okay, theorem. Okay, we, we will see that if we are within a space, within a, sorry, within a set of finite measure, if the domain of this function, the domain E, has finite measure, then we have this uh, somehow asymptotic behavior of the norm. So we have that you can compute the L infinity norm of F as the limit as p exponent p tends to plus infinity of the LP norm of, of f. Okay, so, uh, so we start by considering the Definition of essential supremum. We have that this is the smallest in the smallest number is the uh, sorry smallest number such that we have that f is inequality all almost everywhere in e okay so we have m is equal to to this and then we consider a number m prime less than m If we have that m prime is less than m, okay, then the set, so 
för vem jag sett. Om z a av x i ni um, var f av x is larger than n prime must have a positive uh, positive measure because otherwise we would find that n prime is uh, is the, the essential supremum okay okay and in particular since we know that the domain e is finite also the measure of a of course would be finite so we have we want if we estimate the lp norm of f this is larger or equal than the integral over a of f of p to the power 1 over p which is larger or equal because we are within um, in a of m prime times the measure of a which is finite to the power 1 over p So, since we notice that the measure of a to the power 1 over p tends to 1 as soon as p goes to infinity, what we get is that <coughs> we ob obtain a bound from below of the limit of this quantity. is larger or equal than n prime and this is for any n prime less than m and so you have that inequality is preserved up to m Okay, on the other side we have that this is the easy part somehow. If you compute the norm, this is, you have that this is, uh, by definition is, um, okay, it's f um, p1 to the power p, this is, would be less or equal than m the power p1 over p okay we can get rid of this and this is equal to m the measure of e times 1 over p so for the same reason we have that the limb soup this time of fp as p goes to plus infinity is less or equal than m and so we are done, okay? We combine these two star and two star and we prove and we prove the, te the thesis. Okay, so now the question is um, here we, we require that the measure of E is finite. Um, so do you think that we can remove this or there are some uh, counterexample for which, for instance, if we are within um, a set of infinite measure, this, um, this property doesn't hold anymore. So things are very easy function. A very easy function which is in, um, in L infinity, so it's bounded, but does not belong, but whose integral in, for instance, in the whole real line is not bounded.
the easiest function of all. <laughs> the, the, the easiest function of that you can think, a constant function with a constant different than zero. You have that is in uh, so things out if you have a con f of x, uh, a constant function with c positive, for instance. So what you have, you have that this belongs to L infinity of R. Okay, because the norm will be s will be c, will be the constant. But of course, if you if you do the int, okay, you can remove c is positive p one over p. This cannot be. This is unbounded. Okay, so you cannot have this. So actually, this requirement is is essential. Okay. Okay, now we uh, prove a related result, which is the monotonicity of the LP norm. Okay, so again, we consider uh, we consider a set E with finite measure. So uh, then we have the following: we have if we have two exponents, for instance, p less than r, then we have that. 1 over the measure of e1 over p times fp is less than the same quantity with p replaced by r. So basically, if you start by a function, if you are within a set with finite measure, and we start, you start by a function which belongs to LR, then you automatically know that F belongs to FP, to LP. Hmm? Uh, and, okay, and if, and let two exponent P less than R, okay. Uh, okay, so, so the proof is just a matter of tuning, uh, uh, the exponent in a, in a proper way, and to and to apply the, the other inequality. So, okay. So we start by the LP norm of f to the power p. Okay, this is nothing else that you can see. It has f of p times 1, for instance, okay? Now, we use the elder inequality. Uh, okay, we use the elder inequality with some exponent that will be fixed later on, 1 alpha prime equal to 1. So you have that this is less or equal than e p times alpha over alpha times the measure of v times 1 over alpha prime. OK, so somehow we want that this p times alpha be equal to r, because we have to put it this in relation with this part. So we have that if we choose. This is times one. This is a uh, okay. Uh, so if we choose alpha equal to r divided by p, uh, this is an admissible choice because we know that this is uh, larger than one. 
And so if you, if you do some computation, you have that alpha prime, the conjugate exponent is equal to r divided by r minus p. OK, so we substitute this choice here. P over R, right? P over R times measure of E. Um, R, uh, yeah. Is larger than alpha is R divided by P. We choose it like like this, and it's larger than one. Okay. And the uh, answer so you have that alpha prime. The conjugate exponent with respect to alpha, alpha prime, yeah, it's this. Okay, you have this is r minus p divided by r, and so and so we say that we are done. Okay, because uh, then we rise to everything to the power 1 over p and uh, um, p 1 over p and um, you just observe that r minus p divided by r is uh, 1 over p minus 1 over r and so we, we are done okay because this is the measure of of E minus 1 over P as we equal then minus 1 over P. Okay. So also in this case, uh, um, this hypothesis cannot be omitted. Okay. So do you do you see why? So can I cancel here? Hmm? R here. R. Yeah, this is you make this choice, okay? First, you say that uh, just generally you apply the elder inequality with some exponent, then you fix the exponent in that way. You tune them in that way. Here, R. Ah, yeah, because from time <laughs> I change the way. I, I, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Okay. Here, uh, you have uh, maybe it's uh, a PR. Yeah, sorry, it was a PR. Uh, maybe there are also, yeah, 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 because uh, no, no, it's like this now because here you take uh, to one over P. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so. Uh, okay, so w why you need that the measure of E sh must be less than infinity? Sorry? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You now, what I mean, okay, now I understand what you, you say. So, what I mean is that this, this, this inequality means that if f, uh, if you know that f me, uh, belongs to Lr with r larger than p, then you can state that f 
belongs to LP. Okay, so this inequality tells you that if if the measure of v is finite, then it is enough to to know that if uh, no, this this is what I mean. So if we are not anymore within uh, within a set of finite measure, can we still uh, infer this uh, implication? This is my question. So the answer is no, of course, because otherwise. And uh, so you, you can consider this example. Uh, so for instance, you, we show, I think that we show this fact, but you, you, you know, of course, that Okay, here we are, we are within a set of infinite measure, one and two, e, this time is uh, this unbounded offline, so we have this is, this integral is finite if alpha is larger than one, while is equal to plus infinity if alpha is in between uh, zero and one. So actually, uh, the requirement that the measure of v is finite to have this kind of kind of implication is 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 necessary. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay, and again, um, this is uh, we already we already proved this that uh, any 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 constant function. with the constant different from zero belongs to L infinity of, uh, but does not belongs to, but does not belong, belong to LP if we are within, uh, within, ma within a set of uh, infinite measure, okay? Uh, Okay, so just uh, another remark, and then we can stop. Oh, uh, maybe this is, you can think at it, <laughs> so a function may belong to, um, to LP1 for any, uh, for any P1 less than another exponent P2, but must not and not belong to LP2. Okay, if P2, you can, maybe you can formalize this, if P2 is less than infinity, uh, then you can choose this function x minus P2 in P1, 0, 1. So for any, for any P1 less than P2, and if P2, is equal to plus infinity, then you can use the logarithm of f, which belongs to LP1 for any P1 less than infinity, but not, but not to infinity. Okay, so for today I think we can, we can stop here. Okay.